In this short video, we're going to describe an algorithm or procedure or systematic method for taking a general matrix and transforming it to row echelon form or reduced row echelon form. So again, the idea is that if we have a system of equations which corresponds to an augmented matrix in row echelon form, it is easy to solve by back substitution. But of course, in general, your augmented matrix has just a general rectangular shape, and it doesn't have uh, any uh, row echelon form. So we can systematically start with a general matrix and transform it step by step in such a way that the solution set is preserved. In other words, the solution that you get from the system of equation from the transformed matrix is the same solution uh, as you get uh, from the original system of equations. So those are the two things that are important here, is that number one, we want to make sure that we're doing something systematically, that there is a clear path or algorithm for starting from a general matrix and getting to row echelon form or reduced row echelon form. And of course, it wouldn't help us if it changed the solution. So we have to do it systematically in such a way that the new system of equations has the same solution as the original. So a couple of important definitions. We're going to use the idea that two systems of equations are equivalent, uh, provided that they have the same solution set. And you know, uh, what does it mean for the solution sets to be equal? Well, the formal definition for two sets to be equal is that uh, x is a subset of y, and y is a subset of x. In other words, every element in x is an element of y, and every element in y is an element of x. So, what is this systematic method? It relies on something called an elementary row operation. That is our toolbox. That is what we are going to use to go from a general rectangular matrix to a matrix in row echelon form. And there are three types of elementary row operations. And the first type is to just replace one of the rows with a scalar multiple of itself. So you take row K. This arrow should be read as is replaced by a constant times rho k. Of course, the constant can't be 0. The second type is just to simply exchange rows j and k. It's just a swap of rows. And then the third type is the one that's most important. And it looks complicated, but really it's not. You're going to replace a row with a sum of itself and a scalar multiple of another row. And what's important here is that the scalar multiple can only, so you can only multiply the other row. You can't have anything multiplied by the row that you're replacing. Now that might seem restrictive, but it's very important to develop this systematic method Number one, it ensures that we're going to get the same solution set. And number two, we're going to be using these elementary row operations throughout the course, not just for solving linear systems, but for also determining other information about matrices or linear systems. And we know that as long as we're using elementary row operations, we're going to get the correct information. So obviously, we wouldn't even talk about elementary row operations if it, they did not preserve solution sets. But they do. 
As long as you're using elementary row operations of those three types, you are guaranteed that when you get to row echelon form or reduced row echelon form, that the solution set for the new system is the same as the solution set for the original system. All right, so now we're going to talk about the algorithm. And you can see there's eight steps listed here. And your head, you might start getting a headache when you see these. But uh, instead of trying to memorize the steps, uh, let's try to memorize the purpose of each step. And we'll see that in an example. So remember, row echelon form, we want to have all the rows of zeros at the bottom. We want to make sure that we have uh, a leading one in all the leading columns. So the first non-zero entry in each row should be 1. And then for row echelon form, every entry below the leading one should be 0. And uh, for reduced row echelon form, every uh, entry above it should be 0 as well. So let's go through the steps. Now, we start from the top, and we find the row with the first non-zero entry. We find the first row with a non-zero entry. So if we have any rows of all zeros, we're going to ignore those. We're going to find the first row that has a non-zero entry. And uh, that non-zero entry is going to be called the pivot. So if the pivot's not in the top row, we're going to perform a swap. Remember, that's one of our elementary row operations. We're going to bring that row to the top. And then to get a leading one, we can multiply the top row by the reciprocal of the pivot. Remember, the pivot is that non-zero entry. So 1 over the pivot is defined, and that will result in a new row at the top where you have a leading one. And now we're going to use those type 3 EROs. We're going to get zero entries below that leading one. And the way we do that is we just take whatever number that we have there and, uh, and we multiply it times the top row subtract that from the row that we're working on. So now we've essentially processed one column. Now we've got to move to the next column, and we're going to repeat it, but we're going to move down one row. And so here we cover up any leftmost columns of zeros. Extremely rare that you have any uh, columns of zeros. Uh, but we put that in there just for completeness. And uh, all rows above, including the top row that you just processed. So we're going to move down a row. We're going to move over one column. And we're going to repeat these steps. That'll get us another um, leading one and get zeros below that leading one. And all of this right here, these first six steps, can be thought of as a forward pass. You say forward because you're starting at the top and you're working your way down. And if you stop at this point, you will have something in uh, row echelon form. And we call that portion Gaussian elimination. And again, this gets us to row echelon four. But then if we want to proceed to get to uh, reduced row echelon form, then we need to do two more steps. And we're going to work now from the bottom up. And the idea is um, 
we're going to use again these type 3 elementary row operations to eliminate non-zero entries above the leading ones and so we're going to work backwards we're going to start from the rightmost column and the lowest row and then work our way back up and we repeat that until we've got reduced row echelon form so again after step six the matrix is in row echelon form and we call that Gaussian elimination if we stop at that point and many times we will we'll stop at that point other times though uh, we may want the reduced row echelon form now the this is a great algorithm but we're going to make some slight modifications when we're working problems by hand this is a great algorithm if you're going to to put it in a computer program write an application to do this it's very systematic uh, and uh, it's always going to give you a solution but the step that we're going to try to avoid is uh, this step because that would lead to fractions and then we would be working with fractions throughout uh, the rest of the algorithm so we want to minimize the use of fractions in our uh, when we're solving problems by hand and there's ways that we can do that and we'll see an example so let's work out an example and uh, reduce this uh, augmented matrix from the example to either row echelon form or reduced row echelon form so here's the classic problem you're given three vectors and we'd like to know, does this fourth vector belong to the span of those three vectors? Remember, that is exactly saying, can I find a linear combination of these vectors, u, v, and w, such that that linear combination equals the vector b? Well, that system of equations leads to this augmented matrix. So u is in the first column, V is in the second column, W is in the third column, and my right-hand side, my vector B, is in the fourth column. And so we're going to apply ERO. So what I'd like to do is my first step is I'd like to get in this 1-1 one, one position, I'd like to have A one a leading one now I could go ahead and divide through by three multiply that first row by one-third uh, but boy now I've got fractions and I need to have to work with fractions for the rest of the question but instead I can s look and see that you know look I've got a negative one in the second row and uh, so what I'll do is my strategy is to go ahead and perform a swap between the first and the second rows. How does that help me? I still don't have a 1, but now it's easy to get a 1 there without fractions. I can go ahead and multiply uh, this uh, row by negative 1. Now I've got a 1 in that location. The next step is get zeros beneath it. Well, I already have one zero, so that's good. I need this uh, entry in the second row in the first column. I want that to be zero. So I'm going to take that row and subtract three times the first row. That'll give me three minus three gives me a zero. And so I just have to go through and do that for each entry. So 1 minus 3 times negative 2, that's 1 plus 6, which is 7. 3 uh, minus 24, give me a negative 21. Negative 1 minus 9 will give me negative 10. So then the third row doesn't change, and I don't need to change it because I already have the 0 there. So now I'm ready to move into the next column. I want to get a 1 in the 2-2 two, two position. Well, 
I don't have a 1. And dividing by 7 would be OK in the third column, but then I would have fractions in the fourth column. And I'd like to avoid that. But look, in the third row, I already have a 1. So instead of dividing the second row by 7, we're going to swap the second and the third row. Now I've got a 1 where I want it. Now I need to get a 7 here. Well, 7 minus 7 is 0, so I'll take the third row and subtract 7 times the second row. And when I do that, look what happens. My third row, if I write this as a system of equations, of course I'd have x1 minus 2x2 plus 8x3 equals 3. x2 minus 3x3 equals 7. And then the last one says 0 equals negative 59. Now that's false. That's what we call a contradiction, a false statement. And we can also answer the question now. Is the vector b in the span of u, v, and w? And the answer is no. So whenever you get, let's say there's no solution to that particular system of equations, which means that there are n there is no linear combination of those three vectors, which will equal the vector b. So let's look at another example. It's going to be the same uh, type of question, but instead of the original vector u, which was 3, negative 1, 0, we'll change the first component to 2. So we'll call that u prime, vector u prime. And by the way, in this course, we're going to be using prime to just say slight variation, right? It doesn't mean derivative. The prime here just means we started with the vector u. We're going to make a slight modification. We're going to call the new vector u prime. So now we have a 2 in the 1, 1 position instead of a 3. And let's see uh, if we go through the same type of analysis. Again, I'm not going to try to divide the first row by 2. I'm going to go ahead and perform that same swap with the second row. Swap the first row and the second row. I don't have a 1 there yet, but it's easy to multiply that top row by negative 1. And now I've got a row with a 1 in, as a leading one and no fractions, which is good. Uh, again, I already have the 0 here. I need a 0 in this second row first column. So 2 minus 2 will give me 0. So I'll take row 2. I'll replace it with row 2 minus, oh, there's a mistake here in my slides. So let me go ahead and make that correction. That should have been row 2 minus 2, row 1. All right, should be careful when I cut and paste. All right, but when I subtract twice row 1, now I get a 0 where I want it, and I can move on to the next row. Again, I'd like to get a 1 in the 2, 2 position. I could divide through by 5, resulting in nasty fractions, or decimals. I guess it could, could work with decimals if you're using a calculator. But boy, it's much easier if I just perform a swap here between row 3 and row 2. Now I've got the 1. I just need to get a 5 here. So 5 minus 5 is 0. So take row 3 and subtract 5, row 2. And I could actually stop here. It's not even in uh, row echelon form yet. I could solve the system from this point. And in fact, if I just divide, here I have no choice but, but to divide. There's no other row operation that will get me a 1 in this 3, 3 position. But I don't get any fractions. So this is in, now in row echelon form. And I could solve the system. But just to demonstrate the rest of the algorithm, let's proceed and get this in reduced row echelon form. And in order to do that, I'm going to start from the bottom. And I'm going to start with the rightmost leading one. And I'm going to work my way up 
and to the left. So the first thing I need to do is get zeros above that rightmost leading one. So I need a zero here in the 2, 3 position and the 1, 3 position. Well, I can do that uh, really in a, a single step. I'll do two elementary row operations because they don't depend on each other. Those elementary row operations are independent. And so I will take uh, row 2 and replace it with 3 times row 3 because negative 3 plus 3 will give me a 0. And I'll take row 1 and subtract 8 times row 3 because 8 minus 8 will give me 0. So now I've got my zeros above that rightmost leading 1. Uh, now what's left is I need to get a so I move up one row, move to the left one column, and I need to get a zero above that leading one right there. And so the idea would be uh, I would just replace row one with row one plus two times row two, because negative two plus two will give me zero. So I'm doing the backward pass now. I'm getting zeros above the leading ones starting from the bottom and the bottom right and working my way up and to the left. So now I've got uh, the matrix in reduced row echelon form and I can just read off the solution. It says x3 equals negative 21, x2 equals negative 56, x1 equals 59. And so since we have a solution, we know that we have coefficients for our vectors u prime, v, and w. So b is in the span. There is a linear combination of u prime, v, and w. Namely, the vector b is 59 times u prime minus 56 times vector v minus 21 times vector w. So the best way to learn this is to practice it, and I encourage you to go through these examples, go through the examples in the book, and of course, work out problems from the homework. Now, uh, a new type of matrix, which is very important throughout the course, is what we call an identity matrix. The uh, identity matrices are square matrices. And what a square means, it has the same number of rows and columns. So square. Same number of rows and columns. And on the main diagonal, meaning that you start, the main diagonal starts in the uh, upper left and goes diagonally to the lower right, there's ones. And everywhere else, there is zero. So only on this main diagonal, all of the entries are one. Everywhere else is a zero. And well, what's important about that? is that if a square matrix is in row echelon form or reduced row echelon form, the number of free variables is the same as the number of rows of all zeros. So this applies to a square matrix. So be careful about that. The number of free variables is the same as the number of rows of all zeros. And uh, the reduced row echelon form of a square matrix is either the identity matrix or it has r leading ones and n minus r free variables. So it's either going to have be the identity matrix with no rows of zeros or you'll have a partial identity matrix but then some of the bottom rows replaced by zeros and those correspond to the free variables. 
All right, so I hope you found this uh, video useful. And our last topic in linear systems for this chapter will be learning how to classify uh, linear systems, which will be the next video.